Four days ago, we celebrated Easter, and uh, we were going through the Gospel of John. One of the things that we noted there was that when Mary saw Jesus, when he called her by name, she fell to his feet, and he gave her a mission, which was to go and tell other people about him and say, I have seen the Lord. All of us who weren't a follower of Jesus wind up having a resurrection story. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that we were once dead in our trespasses. So uh, with all the things that get posted on Facebook and on social media, it occurred to me, I've never really posted my story of how I came to life in Christ. And so I thought I'd take a moment just to do that. I was raised in a really loving home. Not everybody's so fortunate, uh, but I was raised in a home where my parents uh, loved me and they loved my sister and uh, they really did want to follow God. They were followers of Jesus, but I had a, a challenge, I had an issue. And that was, I didn't want to be a Christian because my parents were Christians. I didn't want to travel the world one day and say, oh yeah, I'm a follower of Jesus. And someone look at me and say, well, of course you are. How were you raised? So if you're raised Buddhist, of course you'd be a Buddhist. If you were raised Catholic or if you were raised Hindu, of course you'd be a Hindu. Um, and I just didn't want that. I didn't want religion for the sake of religion or religion for the sake of culture. It's not that my culture was bad. I just didn't want it to be some sort of a crutch that I was kind of putting my beliefs on. So I really struggled. My dad was a, a pastor and I loved him dearly and he had a great mind and was constantly challenging me to think. But I knew that you could have great thought and have great thinking without great heart. And the truth is you can get through life and have a lot of great things to say, but you know, if you're a jerk, who cares? So I wasn't sure really what to do with all of those great thoughts. My mom though, who was a follower of Jesus, was a follower in spite of having a lot of pain. She had a disease that was literally tearing up her body. Uh, when I was born, I think she was 5'8". When she passed away, she was 4'11". I mean, it literally shriveled her body down and is an incredibly painful process. We were uh, on someone else's property in a little one-room uh, uh, trailer. My dad was actually in view of a call in Norwalk, California. And so my mom, my sister, and I were there in this trailer in New Mexico. And if you, some places in New Mexico are absolutely beautiful. This wasn't one of those places, in my opinion. Um, this was kind of in the middle of nowhere. And we were in an in-between time. I was a little bit frustrated and I was a lot angry as a young man. I didn't really have a right to be angry because I was raised well and I had great circumstances and loving parents, but I was just frustrated. I didn't know really what was worth living for. Like many, I didn't think that God was really real, but the problem was I was being faced every single day with this life uh, that was displayed through my mom. Now my dad had flashes of the life, but it was really shown through my mom and especially in how she dealt with suffering. I would wake up every morning and she'd be reading her scripture. There was always a smile on her face, not in a superficial way, but in a way that was real and meaningful. She was one of the very first to crack jokes. She had a great sense of humor and she was interested in other people. It wasn't about her pain or her loss. She knew how to love generously. And that frustrated me because it felt like she had something I didn't. And I knew that she would say it was Jesus. So one day I got smart alecky. And uh, I looked at mom and I said, you're a Christian, you're a follower of Jesus, and look what God has allowed to happen to you. Look what happened to you. Why in the world would I ever want to follow that kind of a God? It's a pretty snarky thing to say as a young man, and, uh, but I meant it. I meant every word of it. And my mom, quick as lightning, came back and she looked at me and she said it and she meant it. She said, Derek, I'd rather know Jesus and be sick than be healthy like you and not know him. In that moment, I was confronted with a scenario I didn't think was possible. It never occurred to me that someone might choose sickness to know Jesus. You don't do that. If you really want to be healthy or you want a great life, um, you don't choose sickness, uh, especially not for some sort of a religious crutch. You don't choose it for a cultural background. You would jettison your cultural background in order to you know, embrace whatever health is attached to. But mom would rather be sick and know Jesus than be healthy like me. And I was healthy and I was angrier and not know him and I didn't. And so that got me thinking, what if Jesus is real? What if in fact all of these great thoughts were somehow true? 
And after looking at the other world's religions and finding these limitations there, I just kind of thought, man, what if I'm actually seeking the very thing that's right in front of my face? For me, the journey from my head to my heart was a pretty big journey. But that night, I, in that room, that little one trailer room, looking up at the New Mexico stars, I gave my life to Jesus. And I gave it to him in this way. I said, God, if you're real, Jesus, if you're alive, I'll give you everything I have to be able to make the kind of statement that my mom just made. I meant it with all my heart. In that moment, something changed inside of me. I could actually feel a sensation. It's one, it's a memory that I actually remember to this day. And uh, I knew something was radically different. It turns out Jesus was alive. And I've been walking with him many, many years since, and I've been in ministry for many, many years now, and I've had the privilege of traveling the world. And here's what I can honestly say. I would rather know Jesus and be sick than be healthy like anyone else and not know him. Now, I got a blessing, and my blessing is that I'm not sick. I'm healthy. But I can still tell you, Jesus trumps everything else in my life. I've got kids I love. I've got a wife that I absolutely adore. But the truth is, Jesus trumps it all because he gave me new life. He resurrected me from the dead. While I was still dead in my trespasses, turns out he was the key to my life. So that's my story. What's yours?